and he's owned and operated uh, two businesses. His interests include health, geopolitics, economics, and many other topics which he studies on a regular basis. Uh, Brian is uh, married with a one-year-old boy, and this is a big reason why he is here today. So please uh, welcome Brian Thiessen. Uh, hello everyone. Okay, so I wanted to do a small little thing that I discovered uh, uh, just in my travels in my life uh, about uh, humans and being electric and um, delving into some of the stuff that uh, Curtis was talking about, uh, how we have all these PhDs and all these guys who are sitting around and saying, no, you're not electric, uh, you're just a piece of meat. Uh, no, you're not electric. Well, I'm going to go ahead and show that to you guys right now uh, with about a $12 instrument that you can get at, you know, Rona or wherever. Uh, exactly what we're talking about, about how people are electric, so I'm going to do that right now. So this device here is called a continuity meter. People know what a continuity meter is. Continu continuity meter, you plug it into your socket, okay, to see if the electricity is going. The electrician's going to use it to say, okay, it's definitely on for sure, I'm safe, I can operate in this area, and then he'll go ahead and do his thing. I'm going to check if it goes on. He says, wait, there's a problem here. Okay, continuity meter, a piece of copper, okay? So when I take this thing here, and I put it to this wood surface, that's not a conductor, right? So nothing happens, okay? <coughs> when I can also, let's see if this balances here. Nothing's gonna happen. It's touching the copper. Copper is a conductor, but nothing's happening. Okay, now, as soon as the, I, I touch it, the electrical being that I am, as soon as I touch this, watch what happens. Oh, okay. <laughs> So you, you, I have this, this, uh, this $12 instrument that's smarter than Health Canada, BC Hydro, uh, maybe the gentleman that was at the back earlier, uh, maybe, just maybe, he doesn't work for Hydro Health Canada, so he's still maybe okay. Um, but at any rate, just trying to give you an example of, of um, what Curtis was talking about, how they use, when he says a dummy, he means they use a dummy. Okay, it's called a uh, systemic anthropomorphic mannequin. Not man, not human, mannequin. This mannequin represents an adult that's six foot two and 220 pounds, which represents maybe 3% of the population. <coughs> Has no representation whatsoever of children, uh, women, smaller people, or, or taller people for that matter, or, or larger people than this particular mannequin. They based pretty much all their safety standards on this uh, unit for cell phones, uh, electromagnetic radiation, things of that nature. So, to move into the, um, uh, the PowerPoint here, I call the PowerPoint Hydro or Lydro. Okay, you're going to find that there's a lot of lies, myths, truths, misinformation, uh, things that don't jive and add up, and then obviously it's your decision to decide uh, what's going on here. So next slide. So again, electromagnetism in the foundation of life. Okay, and we have BC Hydro. This is the fa this is the one of the main principles of the entire universe. But somehow humans just didn't have that happen to them. It didn't. Humans don't do it. All the universe operates like this, but we don't. Okay, a lot of scientists are finding this as well, and we don't need to be, what is an electroencephalograph? They, they read your brain with electricity, the electrical impulses. When they resuscitate you, what do they use? Electricity. Okay, next slide. Okay, so this is part of the problem uh, that we'll be in, hopefully not encountering, but this situation. Uh, I had a gentleman talking about um, putting you know, a, a sheet over it and it reduces the, the exposure and the radiation. Well, actually, what would we actually be doing about the next house over? Okay, and then these, the, the purple is representing uh, one of the relay stations that are going to be in your neighborhood that gathers the signals and that sends it to another substation, another substation for your billing purposes. Okay, so there's no te they, they really haven't tested any of this stuff. And in fact, the Public Utilities Commission that the, the people that are designed to test these things, they said, mm, no, you're not testing this. This is the thing you're not testing. And as far as we know and I know, it's the first time in provincial history that this uh, products of this nature, or any nature really, your toilets, everything gets tested, not these. Um, so no, uh, no testing uh, either as well, which is the big deal of the communication between meters to meters. So it's gonna send signals from your house to the next house to the next house in a, in a daisy chain effect. Next slide. 
This is uh, typical to see what you're going to be exposed to maybe in your workplace. Okay, just to give you a visual, you know, to understand where all these computers are, they're all taking in and sending and receiving signals all day. You're in this. You're in this radiation all day, this electromagnetic radiation all day. Now all you have to do is imagine your kids in school, or someone's kids in school, 10, 12 computers, all in the exact same spot in a row, because that's how a classroom is designed, like this. Blasting this stuff out, okay, into their heads, into their bodies, into their entire being. Next slide. Now let's look at it on a larger scale. Your entire city, blanketed with this stuff. Absolutely drowned in this electromagnetic radi radiation. What do you think is going to end up happening? We talked about bees and we'll talk about it later, but look at this. Okay, this is just an idea. And this is to also give you an idea when your water meter comes, which is the plan, and your gas meter and your hydrometer. Okay, your time's in it by three even now. This, the, these, these are numbers you can't even fathom. Just a little bit of looking at some of the relay stations of, of how it works, you can see some of the hardware which you're going to have to pay for, which you don't, we don't even need because our meters work and our meter readers go around and they figure everything out and you know they do their job. So let's talk about uh, electro hypersensitive. Um, I understand this term, but for myself, I'm not a huge fan of the term. Uh, I know people are more sensitive, but to me, it basically says um, that it's only these people. Okay, they are more sensitive maybe to other people, but it is everyone. You're all being affected. This is not, okay, this group here, this 5%, this 12%. It's every single person. You know, you're going to be affected different. Uh, have you ever known maybe someone who smoked for 70 years and they were fine? Someone smoked for five years and they got lung cancer. Okay, so there's always th these ge genetic dispositions and all these different things going on here. But it just happens that now uh, we're, you know, very much n uh, neglecting uh, uh, what's going to looks like to be six to fifteen percent of the population. And as we keep bombarding people with these things, and kids are growing up their whole lives being exposed to this stuff, twelve hundred hours a year in school, go home with a smart meter, Wi-Fi, people talking on cell phones. This is going to be a big problem. Okay. Um, next slide. Okay. So symptoms. Curtis talked about, uh, you know, nerves, neuron receptors, electricity of your body. Think about it. When these things are being disrupted, you're going to have problems, okay? And, and, and problems of this nature. Concentration, memory, uh, behavior, sleep disruption, headache, depression, discomfort, irritability, okay? Uh, buzzing in the ears, heart palpitations. Uh, all these things that we're looking at here, visual disorder, cardiovascular problems, respiratory problems. Okay, the worst part about this entire situation right now is that a lot of people, since they don't have the education and understanding this, this dilemma that we have, they won't put two and two together. Uh, what am I eating? Uh, oh, I must just be sad because you know, I lost my job or some, some other effect. They're, they're going to attach it to something else. And then their doctor's going to say, okay, well, here's this pill. Take this, do this. They go home, they're exposed to the Wi-Fi all day or, or, or the smart meter all day. Okay, so again, you're messing with electrical signals in a, in a human being. What we also know in, in animals and humans, and you know, obviously plants, but more so for the other two, you have a fractal antenna. Every single one of your cells is a fractal antenna. It can pick up anything within the spectrum of, of radio frequency. From the bottom all the way to the top, sunshine, cell phones, everything in between, your little um, you know, computer, everything. Your cells pick that up. It reads that and it, it responds to stresses. It's stressed, okay? Next slide. Okay, so this, uh, we're taking a look. Remember we talked about the, uh, the mannequin, okay? Uh, so an adult, uh, a 10-year-old, a 5-year-old, these, these little kids, man, these, these kids even in the womb, okay, that we're going, to ha we're going to be exposing children to this. Look what happens to a child's skull because it's not uh, like an adult skull. It's not thick. It's not done um, um, getting, getting to its uh, final stages. This is the stuff that happens. This stuff goes right through their brains, uh, cell phones and things of that nature. But now just imagine they're sitting in their class or they're sitting in their room or they're sitting at home, they're sitting in the room next to the smart meter, the entire body getting bombarded with this. Next slide. Okay, so there's no health effects, BC Hydro. No, nothing to worry about whatsoever. Okay, in California, they're already removing them. PG&E is California's version of BC Hydro. They're already removing them due to health effects. There's also no other reason. Okay, California is, uh, as far as I know, the largest state in the union. Okay, and the largest state in the union in the United States is saying no. There's a bunch of others that have just said flat out, we're not putting these in, this is not going on, there's, there's nothing that's happened here. Next slide. 
Okay, uh, the Russians. Okay, there's also no, remember, there's never been a study that's found anything. This is BC Hydro, this is Health Canada telling you this. Do you know that in Russia you can't even buy a microwave? Okay, you can't even buy a microwave in Russia because they've done all these studies. Okay, in 1976 they figured this out. Okay, look at all, remember uh, some of the stuff we talked about earlier? Degeneration of cellular voltage parallels in blood and lymph systems. In, uh, degeneration, destabilization of internal cellular membrane uh, potentials. Breakdown of electrical nerve impulses. Uh, breakdown and degeneration of nerve electrical circuits and loss of energy fields and symmetry in the nerve centers. Look at this. Long-term cumulative loss of human and animal vital energy within 1,600 foot radius. Okay, and we're talking about putting a smart meter right here next to a baby's crib. Okay, and this is just for, this, these are just very low levels. Look at these limits they're talking about here. A thousand times less than what they're saying. Oh, it's safe, don't worry about it. Next slide. Okay, remember the whole, uh, uh, some of you may remember, I didn't know fully about this. Remember the whole power line situation? And they're talking about leukemia and things are going on here. No studies, remember, BC Hydro, nothing. They've never once found anything. Take a look, 33 years, 35,000 people studied. Okay, that's a pretty decent study. That's a long, drawn out, they're figuring a lot of stuff out, okay? There's, there doubles the risk of leukemia, all kinds of different stuff. EMF uh, strength, um, you can see where it reduces uh, vitamin C, all genetic damage from radicals and carcinogens, okay? Leukemia starts in the womb, okay? Uh, just recently, uh, brain cancer in children has, has become the number one uh, killer of children. What was the one previous to that? Leukemia. Okay, I'm not gonna, I can't say this is the exact and only cause. That's not what I'm up here trying to do. Could we, uh, could we just maybe think that something might be going on here? Uh, next slide. So we're gonna talk about the uh, smart meter program here. This is, this is what BC, I, when, when I say what BC Hydro is saying, I take it right out of their, their manuals, their stuff. You can find this stuff online. You will know I'm saying exactly verbatim what they say. Uh, next slide. Safety is our top priority for BC Hydro and it is important as the focus of the smart metering program. Okay, I just showed you guys a few slides, just a few. Like I could have literally, we could have been here for hours and be going over data and studies. Uh, thousands of, of research papers. After decades of research, there are no demonstrable health or environmental effects from exposure to low level radio frequency signals. Are you kidding me? None. They are lying to your face. None. It's never happened. They need you to believe that this is safe, so you'll just say, This is safe. I will take the smart meter on my house. All this stuff is safe. Russia, the UK, uh, I'm not even going into the, the United States military studies. They're re uh, referencing to 2,300 studies, all the same effects, the exact same effects, okay? Europe has some of the strictest radio frequency re regulations. Switzerland, for example, has a precautionary limit for highly sensitive areas like schools and hospitals. Do you know what Switzerland's precautionary level is right now? We're taking Wi-Fi out of our schools. That's what they're doing. That's what their precaution is. Now BC Hydro is saying, oh yeah, we, we, like to, we like to go by what Switzerland says. Switzerland's taking this stuff out. They're removing the technology. They're not adding it. They're not saying it's safe. They're taking it out. And this is not just Switzerland. This is Germany. They're doing this. France. The unions are getting involved. I'm not working in a building with this stuff. I'm not going to be exposed to this. Teachers, uh, people of that nature, firefighters, all these kinds of things. Dr. Patricia Daly and John Blatherwick, the current and previous chief medical health officers for Vancouver Coastal Health confirmed there is no, once again, there's no known health risk and no reason for concern over radio frequency from normal cell phone usage. Are you kidding me? Okay. Smart meters transmit at 1 100th the power of a cell phone. I'm going to show you that is an absolute flat out lie and not even I have done that. Okay, we've had nuclear physicists and scientists look at that and say, no, you're lying. This is a straight up lie, period. Next slide. <coughs> Okay, so PG&E is California, they're, they're, uh, they're forced to disclose, okay, they've been forced to disclose somewhere about 10,000 pulses a day is, is, is a decent number. Okay, in a mesh network, we're looking at 190,000 <coughs> pulses a day. You're going to see evidence to this nature in a second, okay, uh, and I have some mathematics here from a video we're going to watch. 
What is the definition of on? You know what BC Hydro's definition of on is? These pulses go out in microbursts, like fractions of seconds. They add up all the microbursts and they say it's only on a minute. It's only on a minute. It's off 99% of the day. And guess what? You know what? To, to a general effect, they actually are in a way telling the truth. In a general sense. But they're lying. They're misleading you. Okay? Um, again, the Public Utilities Commission has been blocked. So we're going to go ahead and go to... Um, yeah? Okay, and those, so uh, just so everyone knows, we'll press play. Uh, this is Dr. John Blatherwick letting you know what he knows about the pulses from the, uh, my, uh, the smart meters. Go ahead. Oh. your face these are safe this is what's happening this is exactly the deal and then when it comes to actually knowing the information about what he's uh, putting on your house he doesn't even know I'm not joking when I tell you this is Hydro's top guy this is their top guy the one guy at least that should know doesn't even know but he's, he's able to tell you don't worry it's safe it's all good Okay, independent science shows higher exposure than cell phones, not less. Okay, so we have the UCSC lecture in nuclear policy expert. So not just some guy, you know. He's saying uh, that these things are way worse. Okay, at least twofold worse. Okay, if, you, if I can read it for you, but if... Uh, Conducted a study on the potential health effects of smart meters. Hirsch's research is in no way associated with the university. State legislators requested the independent science-based study in an attempt to avoid the bias in the data measurement or conclusions. Hirsch's research found smart meters emit significantly more radiation than the average cell phone. And he says the cumulative whole body exposure from a smart meter at three feet appears to be approximately two orders of magnitude higher than that of a cell phone, rather than two orders of magnitude lower. So who are you gonna believe, hydro? Or this guy, okay? And all those other studies previous. Okay. And I'm going to show you uh, another video, or we're going to watch another video. Yep. Okay, I just did that one quick so it could save time. Does it sound like the uh, sound's going as good on this one? Oh, here we go. This is what this thing's going to do on your house all day long. But of course, Hydro says it's not on 99% of the time. A 
156 pulses a minute. Okay, I've done the math on that. Times 24, times 60, 224,640 pulses a day. Not on, remember, 99% of the day it's not on. So she's saying that's as low as her, me uh, her meter that she's using right there goes, okay? So do you remember how they were saying it's one one hundredth of the strength of a cell phone? Okay, look at this number here, it's 0 0.3, and if you saw very quickly in the first one, okay, you're seeing 30s, you're seeing 300, so it's actually pretty well the reverse of what Hydra's telling you, okay? So it goes, what this video does, and everyone's welcome who has the internet to watch these, there's multiple ones. I wish this wasn't the science that we had to use, but again, the Public, public Utilities Commission was blocked from doing any studies, so people are forced to go out and do this stuff and try and figure out this out on their own. Okay, along with some of these other gentlemen. Okay, now we're uh, sort of shifting gears and into an entirely different phase of the operation of who is in BC Hydro and what is going on on this planet, okay? Would you guys believe me if I told you there are plans right now that have been going on since 1992 to run a cable from Alaska to Siberia for BC to sell their hydro to Asia? Would you guys believe me they've been talking about this since 1992? The Global Energy Network Institute and a bunch of capitalist cronies? See all these projects that they're doing up here? Uh, river diversions, you know, ruin, ruining for, uh, uh, fish, uh, all kinds of land. They want to have all this stuff up here so they can frack. If you, anybody knows what fracking is, okay, they want to make electricity about, about yeah. completely polluting all of the water in all of BC, and they don't care. They don't care about anything. And they want to send this electricity through here, this way. Now, also, you can see across Canada, look what's happening. This is, this is a, you know, um, a Canada-wide issue, too. They're spending all this money. Uh, Ontario, $87 billion. Manitoba, uh, $20 billion. Uh, Alberta, $14 billion. Okay? We build this stuff with our money. Private companies walk in and say, okay, we're selling the power now. Thanks for the money. Thanks for the infrastructure. Thanks for doing everything. That's good enough. We'll take over from here, all you taxpayers. Okay, and I'm going to show you what's going to be happening in a minute. Okay, and then we got a lot of power going down here to uh, California as well, and then all through Maine and all this other stuff. We're powering another country. We're, we're exploiting all our land. And I'm okay with, you know, selling a bit of power. we got some excess power that's generating some revenue for ourselves. Maybe reduce our rates. That's what makes sense. Everyone's okay with that if we have the extra. Next slide. Okay. We must, uh, we must implement the smart metering program to, to keep up with demand. That is a very funny thing to, to see. Over the last five years, the demand for electricity has been about 50,000 gigawatt hours. 51, 52, 50, 51, 50, right in that range. No real massive spike in demand, nothing crazy going on, okay? Hydro says demand will grow at 40% over the next 20 years. Well, if, we, if we're trying to extrapolate data, it actually looks like maybe 1%, a little bit here and there. But people are saving power, more efficient uh, appliances that hopefully are coming along, uh, things of that nature. Uh, BC alone exports $2.6 billion worth of extra electricity to the United States. Remember, we don't have enough. Oh my God, what are we going to do? We need to do this entire program. We better do it now, otherwise there's going to be trouble. We're already exporting electricity. We've been doing it for uh, you know a decade or more. How long? So why are we doing this entire project again? This again is the one project that I think $12 billion of uh, oversight, the Public Utility Commissions, the Liberals and all their buddies say, no, you're not allowed to look at that. You, you don't need to know what's going on with the $12 billion. We'll take care of it. Thank you. Just trust us. Okay. So yeah, I've been, uh, I, I talked about that. That's probably where the 40% projected increase would be coming from. Russia, Asia, uh, things of that nature. Next slide. This is a funny one, okay? We're going to talk about mistruths and lies and what are we talking about here? I love this. I love this one. In spite of difficult economic conditions during the year, the impact on results of weaker domestic demand, this is what they say, weaker domestic demand, okay? One paragraph. Let's go to the next paragraph. We continue to make progress this year on our capital plan for upgrading aging assets to improve system resiliency and meet growing customer demand. Weaker, growing. 
<laughs> one paragraph to the next. These are the guys that are in charge of your safety, your health, and your wallet. Okay? Uh, next, next slide. Okay, so when we're talking about this, uh, what is the real reason behind this? Um, in, the, in the previous slide, when it showed that uh, uh, the map of Canada and the states there, highly recommended read on that article, it is a beauty. They're talking about how, look at this, retrofitting entire apartment complexes with smart appliances. This is not about smart meters. This is about selling you and making you retrofit your entire homes and all the low-income people retrofit your homes with all of their new appliances or else you're going to be charged these rates. And until you do, you're going to be charged these rates. So what kind of expense is that? Washer, dryer, fridge, freezer, uh, stove, all that stuff. Because uh, what a smart appli uh, meter does is it connects with smart appliances. Now we're sending signals into the home and these devices in the home, your stove, are sending signals out. Now this is in your home now. Remember we talked about 224,000 pulses a day? Now what are we talking about? 500,000? Uh, okay, now we're going to talk about your, your privacy and another way that they're going to make money. Do you know that the Liberal government right now, uh, October 20th, okay, they're just saying, you know what, we're going to change the freedom of information, we're going to change all the privacy laws, we need to sell this data coming out of your home, out of what, what you're using, what appliances you're using, all this stuff, we need to sell this to consumer groups, we need the money, your rates won't go down, we need to do this, but until, uh, before we do that, we got to change all the laws around so we can profit from you guys. They're changing the law to make money again off you guys. Next slide. Okay, and what it comes what it comes down to a little bit as well is they're talking about all this demand, and I'm not against jobs, I'm not against growing the economy. This is why I actually don't understand this pro uh, program. But what she is also doing, or they want to do, is uh, get all these guys to produce the electricity, send them electricity, okay, and they don't even have to really pay for it. You have to pay pay the rates. They get all these cuts. They get to rip up all our land, destroy our fish and our lakes and our water. Excellent. <coughs> and then we talk about another issue of privatization of water as well. These guys want to privatize your water. Don't even think that it's not the case. They do it everywhere. This is what GE does. GE is the one that makes the smart appliances. They make the turbines. They do all that stuff. They want to privatize water. They want to sell water. They want to steal water for fracking things of this nature to produce electricity as a sell to, to Russia and China and the states. So this is what's coming. They want to build corridors where the wiring goes and then they want to take water and build it down the same corridor and also the gas down the same corridor. Follow the money. We spoke about it earlier. Follow the money. GE, uh, Corix, all these guys, BC Hydro, okay, you look at situations like BC Rail, I studied economics long, long enough, you put a company in debt enough, you can take over pe for peanuts. This is what's happening. That's all. Here we go. Every single one of these red boxes, all liberal connections, all higher ups and liberals. These are the people that are stealing from you and your country, it, it, it makes me sick. We don't do anything, they'll do it. When you go to rob a bank, and you get no resistance, you go back to the bank and you rob that same bank. Well, it's the Bank of Canada, BC Rail, all our resources, all this stuff, all these guys. Look at Liberal Hydro, Liberal Hydro, Liberal Hydro, Liberal Hydro, Liberal Hydro, all these guys. And you can see a chain of events that have been happening since about 2002. Yeah, you get this job, you can be in charge. You can also be in charge, you can also be in charge. And you're going to hear about a company that I'm going to call CAI Capital Management. All these early investors. Early investors in CAI capital management. Okay, all these guys have been buddies from various projects. The Olympics. Uh, she worked with the Rusty Gapo a long time ago. Rusty Gapo, you know Enron guys, Solomon Brothers, Enron, all work together. Enron and Solomon Brothers guys are in charge of our, our natural resources and our safety and our health. Next slide. So these guys are the primary shareholders in a company. Do you know what Corix is, is doing? Do you know who got the contract to install hydro smart meters? Corix. Okay, this is what's happening. These guys are profiting, and when uh, BC, uh, BC Hydro does their ads for the smart meters, this gentleman here, he's uh, one of the directors of Post Media, he's gonna get that money too. Vancouver Sun, Times Columnist, a couple other things. Next slide. Pay very close attention to this exact slide right here. It may not seem like it's much, but you're, you're witnessing what is happening right now. This is the logo you're going to see on your trucks. Okay? 
And I talked about it before. How soon do you think it's going to be where hydro's just gone and Corex is in there? Because when Corex takes over the entire operation, they're going to end up with our, our power plants, our rivers, our rights to our waterway, all the power we produce, everything. And when you've got these capitalist cronies in there, all these, these, these money-hungry guys, they don't care what's in the way. Next slide. Case in point. Okay, this is not me. This is the Auditor General. Looks like 2.2 billion. Actually, it's about 5 billion. 5 billion in debt. Right there. Okay? So, BC Hydro, what they're doing is they're putting Hydro in debt so they can take over all the resources and buy it up on the cheap. They say, oh, you know, we're in debt. Look what happened. What do we do? How did this happen? We don't know what happened. Here we go. Here comes Corex and CAI Capital Management. We'll buy that off you. We'll buy that run of river off of you that, you that the province paid for, that everyone paid for, and now we'll just reap the rewards of cranking up the rates and taking all the money in, because that's what we do. Okay? These guys are putting hydro in debt to steal hydro from you, just like they did with BC Rail. Your land, your territory, and they're telling you everything's safe so they can get at this money. And by the way, all those guys we saw earlier, they're all paying themselves bonuses. They're deferring the debt, they're calling it a profit, and then they're paying themselves bonuses. Okay? Realize one thing, this is your money. They are stealing from you directly, and nothing else besides is happening. They are stealing from you right now. This is exactly what's happening. Next slide. Who's paying for the uh, fancy Hydro ads? Do you guys know that they're, paying, they're, they're spending about $8.6 million, this is in the Hydro's business plan, on ads versus 1.1 on safety. Okay, and they had the Centers for Disease Control do this, this bogus study that didn't show anything. Okay, now this number is likely to go ramp right up to the roof because this is unlimited budget on this. People need to take this. Why? Because those guys need to get their paycheck. So you better believe they're telling the truth. And if you don't, guess what? Tough. That's what Rich Coleman says, tough. You voted against them, too bad. You're taking them. Why? Because these guys want their money. They need to get paid. That's all. Okay, we're gonna talk about time abuse billing. This is how this works. They get the smart meter in, they say, you know what, now we know exactly what's going on every single minute of every day with every appliance. We're gonna charge you from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. This is the highest time we're gonna charge your rates. Also from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. They're already doing this in Ontario, California, everywhere else. Now think about one thing, they're saying, oh, we need to balance the loads, oh, our system's old. No, it's a lie, it's a false lie. They are doing it to maximize their profits because they know that's the exact time you use the most amount of energy. You cannot avoid it. You can't tell your kids they're not going to school. You can't not cook breakfast, eat dinner when you get home. So they say, well, we're going to charge you. They have a monopoly now. And when I want to talk about something, the debt we were talking about that they're in, how do you guarantee a debt? You guys are the guarantors of the debt. You want to know why? Because a creditor won't lend them any money. They'll lend them money. Well, how do we know you're going to get the money back? We have a 100% monopoly on electricity. We have people that will pay rates, and they will do it. And if they don't, they don't have electricity. So your debt's always going to get paid. So the creditor goes, here's more money. Here's more money. Okay, let's go to the video.
More than 8,000 people saw their usage triple last year, according to Ontario Hydro. 8,000 people. It's up to the McGinty Liberals. So this is happening everywhere. This is not Ontario. This is happening in Ontario way more than this. Thousands upon thousands of people. Uh, we're talking about uh, California, everywhere, Texas. You look online, you will see this complaint everywhere. Uh, my bill is quadrupled. Oh, that's too bad. The meter's never wrong. It must be you. Pay up. We'll shut your power off. This is what they do. Now imagine people on fixed in incomes. What are you going to do? You get a set check, nine hundred dollars, a two thousand, whatever, a thousand dollars a month. Bam, your hydro bill goes up. Deal with it. You choose between paying your rent and eating or uh, keeping the heat on. Okay, this is the plan for these guys. Okay, again, I'm looking at these numbers: eighty-four to one hundred fifty percent increases. You know, this is everywhere. Okay, in Ontario, you know. People say uh, four times higher. This guy here, two thousand seven hundred forty-two dollar uh, hydro bill. Okay, and he says, um, I think there's something wrong here. And they say, No, that's your fault. You must be running a grow up, or you're doing something. Can't be, uh, can't be the meter. It's you. Pay for it. So you had to do all this math and figure it out, and then finally they caved in and said, Okay, we'll we'll think about it. I wonder what his next bill was and what happened. Next slide. Okay, Boulder, Colorado. Case in point: cost cost overruns. The utility, they said, oh, 15 million max, this is 15 million max, they said, cost them 50 million. Okay? Five zero. They said 15 and ended up costing them 50. They're like, we want rid of all these smart meters. This is the worst decision we've ever made. Remember California? We got Colorado. We got all these people going, what is happening here? Next slide. How many extra days of work will you have to uh, need to do to pay for your hydro bill now? Do you feel happy about that? Do you feel like you're going to go to work for another maybe week, two weeks, a year, all this hard work, and you get to pay these profiteers? You get to pay these guys that are coming in to tax you so they can make money, so their share price, their initial investment share price goes through the roof. That's what you're going to be doing. Next slide. Is the wireless smart grid safe? Okay, they all oh, hacking. No, this will never be hacked. It is an impossibility. We're BC Hydro. We got this little meter we designed here, and we're putting it on your house, and nothing will happen to it. I can guarantee you that much. Okay, look at all these places that have been hacked. The CIA and the Pentagon, their primary and sole responsibility is defense and protecting everything that they have. They get hacked. So they have something more powerful than the CIA and the Pentagon in this little meter. This is what BC Hydro is telling you right now. Okay, next slide. Smart grid cyber security and near chaos. Okay, these are power engineering guys. These are guys that know the score. They're saying basically that forever, from now on, from the moment these things go in, we're going to be forever in a war to secure how these guys can hack and we can stop them from hacking, hack and stop from hacking. This will go on forever. We say, I just said, oh, well, we didn't know about those costs. And they say it's never going to be hacked, and you look into their business plan, and it's actually, it says, we'll develop a theft analytic system, a hacking system. But they're already telling you it's not going to happen. Remember John Blatherwick? Now they're safe. Uh, what's, what's going on with the meters? Oh, I don't even know. Don't, you know I don't know. I can't debate that with you. Next slide. Okay, so you, you never know what happens. Let's say some war situation goes on. Then just hack the grid. Shut down the electricity. 100% vulnerable. If you look at war tactics, what they use, NATO and all those guys, one of the first things they do is they shut down the electricity. That's the primary thing to shut down an entire economy. What if this happens? Okay, here's another example, uh, Los Angeles. They said, hey, uh, guy, you're a hacker, right? Well, come in here and see if you can hack this place. One day, one guy hacked the entire water grid. One day, one guy. He could have changed the, the levels on the chlorine, poisoned everybody. He said, well, I'm not gonna do that, but uh, here you go, you want me to see if I could hack it? Bam, done. One day. Okay, so this is a benefit to organized crime. Uh, BC Hydro's like, oh, we got the grow ops and all these guys. We're gonna, we're gonna make sure that this, you know, this stops. Uh, we're gonna shut down our primary customer. We definitely don't want those guys doing this. So what we're gonna do is, this is gonna allow us to know what's going on. No, this will increase this. First of all, it'll increase profits for for, for drug dealers and, and dope growers because these guys are gonna say, you know what? Uh, I have to increase the prices here, so the risk goes up. So the prices go up. So you see more crime. You see more robberies. And you might even see kids turning to uh, cheaper drugs like methamphetamines and things of this nature. Okay? I don't know if anyone doesn't know what those are. Those are a problem all over Canada, all over the globe. So they might turn to that instead of that. 
So Hydro says theft in 2010 was 30 million. Well, uh, how do you know? You can't know that number. You can't even know that number. It's being stolen. It's unaccounted for. They'll just make up another. Then when they want to pro promote the smart meter program, magically in 2011 they say theft will be around 100 million. So what we're looking at is a 300% yearly increase in BC Hydro says theft, no more theft, not going to happen. Okay, you put a smart meter here, you want to steal hydro, you steal it from here. So what are they going to do? Nothing. So they're selling you more lies about what they're going to do, keep you safe while these profiteers sit in the back room taking your money. Next slide. How about home safety and insurance? Does anyone know uh, how many smart meter fires there have been? Thousands of them. Okay, who takes, who takes care of that? BC Hydro? Nope. Your home, your home house insurance? No. Nope. You do. Your house insurer says, well, uh, BC Hydro is the one that did the work. So what's going on here? They're, they're clearly responsible for this. Uh, BC Hydro says, well, actually, no, we don't own that part of the house. You own that. BC Hydro says, we own the meter. We own this. If the fire started here, that's your fault. And then your house insurer doesn't cover you. So you have a fire in your house, costs you a thousand, two, three, four thousand dollars. You, somebody dies. We're talking about death in a household because of fire, because they put these new technologies, these smart meters on, on old wiring, 30, 40 year old, maybe 50 year old wiring. You, go, you cause a fire. It's not, it doesn't, it doesn't hook in, it doesn't adapt enough. You talk to industrial electricians, they say there's a high probability about 1% of all households uh, are gonna get a fire from this. And it's not that you put it in, it's gonna happen right away, but it, it, it's probably gonna happen. Okay, not everybody. Look at this room. Say we got 100 people in this room. Who's the person in the room that's going to have their house on fire? Who's the person in the room that's uh, going to have all this damage? Who wants to be that person? Next slide. Okay, again, fire investors probably link between smart meters and house fires. This is, I don't know what, Florida? Uh, wherever this is, okay? This is not, uh, this is not... Australia. Austra Australia. Here we go, Australia. Not even in the States, Australia. This is going on down there too. Next slide. Okay, wired versus wireless options. We don't have an option. Rich Coleman says directly to your face, you do not have an option. In a democracy, you cannot have an option. You cannot have a choice. There's no option. Okay, remember democracy, what, uh, what day is it tomorrow? Who are these guys fighting for? Democracy, freedom, all these things. Rich Coleman says, too bad. No freedom, no democracy. Okay. No option for wired smart meters. Idaho and Italy are just two examples of where they employ wired meters. 27 million wired meters in Italy. Okay, it's actually easier. You just put them in there. You don't need all these uh, relay stations, which GE makes, so that's why they want to have them out there. Uh, all this other stuff, you just put the wired meter on, everyone's safe, uh, people are exposed to less uh, EMF and all these things. No, no option. We don't want to go that route. We cannot do it. They say it's too expensive. Wired meters are actually cheaper. Okay, this is the funniest part about this. It's, it's actually not really funny. Analog meters cost about $50 and are made in Canada. New smart meters are at least $150 per meter and $516 according to BC Hydro's business case. $516 for these things. We, and we, we already have meters that work. How, do, how are you getting hydro? Why are you getting the hydro bill if your meter doesn't already work? Next slide. Hardwired over wireless to cut costs. The entire state of Vermont. Uh, actually, it's cheaper. Um, sorry, the, the, the wireless option is more expensive. BC Hydro says uh, the wireless option costs more. It's too expensive to go wired. What? Next slide. So uh, Christy Clark and you know all the politicians who want to keep the economy growing and all this stuff. We're buying our, 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 our meters from overseas now instead of in Canada. So we can keep their economy growing instead of ours. Because heaven forbid we would make the own meters, our own meters that are going on in our own house. Because nobody needs a job right now. And, 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 and what if they set up, a, they could have just set up a factory right over there or over there. Or in Kamloops where I'm from. We'd have tons of workers. No, got to send it overseas. Why do you send it overseas? Privatize, send everything overseas. Corex is already starting to move everything overseas so they can keep their cost down. 50 year lifespan for the analog meters. 10 to 15 year lifespan for smart meters. Okay, so we're basically being paid, uh, forced to pay 1,000% more, remember $50 or $516, to have a shorter lifespan and are made overseas. Is that smart? Okay, we're firing all the meter readers. Don't need them anymore. Too bad. 
And we send all the, uh, the information gathering, the call centers send that all overseas too. This is what Corex does, this is what private corporations do. They come in and they tear things apart and they make things cheaper. Next slide. Okay, so most smart meter projects uh, actually end up costing about 2.5 times more. This is what they've been finding. There's an average of the cost of that, that they've been doing. BC Hydro says this is going to cost us a billion dollars. Okay, first of all, these are the guys that are $5 billion in debt. They have no idea what's going on with their finances. And they say, we have come up with a hard number for you. This is what it will be. Okay, no, they haven't even done their, their uh, theft and data analytics. They haven't even done their data storage. They haven't accounted for tons of these costs. And even if they did, they probably defer them. So here we go, next slide. So they talk about the smart meters are gonna allow you to get your power on quicker and faster because we've got a smart meter. Smart meters do not turn on power. People do that. That's what the technicians are for. They drive out and they go, here's the problem. We're gonna do this. Now you might save maybe 10 minutes of that, oh, we can pinpoint the problem. But usually they go out there and they can find it pretty quickly. Is that worth all these billions of dollars and all these guys profiting just for this? No, next slide. Now what else are they talking about? It's gonna help get the power on faster. Well, actually, look at this. We have a branch that falls on a line. Significant numbers. Destroyed, just a, a branch falls down. Okay, so we're actually gonna end up destroying the meters when all these things happen because they get power surges and they blow up. Okay, so how does that work? Okay. This guy's uh, fridge, uh, his smart meter, or his, his, when they installed his smart meter, blew up his fridge. It's in Richmond. Yeah, Richmond. Okay, and this has happened a lot of times. This is just a guy that got in the paper. Your hot tubs, you better make sure you're home when they shut that off power off for a minute. You might lose a few appliances. Guess who gets to pay? You do. Next slide. We really save money in Sweden. Uh, consumption patterns change about 1%. Okay, so they keep talking about, oh, you're going to save money. You have this meter, you save money. No. Hydra says we can save 15% on our bill just by putting on a smart meter. Meters don't change consumption patterns. Humans do. This is what I do. I shut my light off. I decide I want to waste or not waste my electricity. Think about how much you save. How much electricity do you really waste? Anyone in here, how much do you actually waste? Probably not a whole lot. Maybe you leave the light on for a while when you're not supposed to in the kitchen or the living room. Okay? So if they say if um, they say if they crank up the prices high enough, that's what they're gonna do. You'll start thinking about saving. No, 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 no. This is about you making money. This is not about me saving. I don't save when the prices go up. When bananas go up at the grocery store, I'm not saving. I'm spending. Next time. Smart meters may not have much effect on energy consumption. Money Magazine. This is what BC Hydro, in direct contradiction to, to these business guys, is saying, no, actually, uh, you're not going to save money. BC Hydro is trying to tell you you will. Thanks, Lord. So what's more important? Um, Curtis talked about pollinators. Our entire food supply. Every, pretty much everything you eat. Okay, next slide. All these, remember, BC Hydro says there's been no studies ever whatsoever done to show anything's happening, okay? All these guys are doing all these studies, okay? Colony collapse disorder in uh, five to ten days from exposure. I just had a guy send me an email, I lost all my bees, 21 days. Gone. Been here doing this, uh, what, I forget what the, the, the bee guys are called, apiary or something like that. Uh, I've been doing this for, you know, 30 years, gone. You don't have bees, you don't have life on this planet because you don't have food, period. And then if you want to uh, keep someone's economy going, you can keep South America's economy going because you can import food from South America so you can eat. So it takes away the ability to be sustainable. Next slide. Okay, look at this. See? The bees don't come back. They don't know where they're going. They can go out, they might go out, but they for sure can't find a way back to the hive. And what you get left with is, um, you know, the queen bee, a few drones that have hung around, and then in the winter you need those bees in there to keep the heat up. That hive's done. Okay? And, and you, yeah, we see, that's okay. We see all those effects. So no known studies of effects, okay? Since 1932, they've known this stuff. U.S. Naval Medical Research Institute referenced 2,300 research articles that don't exist, according to Hydro, listing an excess of 120 illnesses from low-level microwaves. This was reinforced by confirmation from the U U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency documents from 1972 to 1976. Okay. 20 pages of laboratory uh, studies citing suppression of the Im immune system in cows, cats, dogs, hamsters, whales, bees, bats, butterflies. Okay. 
This guy referenced 8,000 research articles describing low-level radiation and its effects on animal navigation, plants, and, and health of the animal kingdom. No studies have ever been done. Don't worry about anything. Next slide. Okay. Now let's talk about democracy. Okay, uh, we've had all these towns, 24 towns right now have said we do not want these smart meters. The money men that we talked about earlier say, too bad, you're getting them. We also had at the, um, the UBCM, which is where all the municipalities, the mayors, the councils, chiefs and councils go and they say, you know, they prefer presented with issues. Well, Hydro wanted to roll out the smart meter issue. So Hydro was a sponsor of the event. No one else besides Hydro was allowed to even talk for one second about smart meters. And still, the people said, no, these are not safe. We know they're not safe. They voted 55% against putting in the meters. Guess what Christy Clark said? Too bad. Too bad you're getting them. There's no choice and there's no option. What happened? Think about this now. We're talking about tyranny. Your vote doesn't mean anything. This is communism. Tyranny for profiteers. And we can debate about that, but think, okay? We're talking about communism in our country right now. We're talking about these guys fought and died for the freedoms that we're trying to give to people overseas and our people that we elect when our one day of democracy every three, five years says, too bad, you're getting them. Next slide. Okay? Men who do not keep the earth sacred create much sorrow. What else is there to be said? Are we keeping the earth sacred? sacred? No. Are we destroying the planet? Yes. Are we destroying bees? Yes. Are we destroying our children? Are we destroying ourselves? Yes. What results do you expect to happen? Sorrow. Problems. Health effects. 120 illnesses. Leukemia. All these problems. Next slide. So really, it's like, do you care? You know, what are you going to do when you leave this room? Go home and say, that was bad. Yeah, hydro, they're scamming us. Or, That's, I don't know, or, it's kind of alright though. It's not a big deal. Are you, are you going to try and get active, let people know? Are you concerned about your health? Are you concerned about if you live in a duplex, you might get two of these. If you live in a fourplex, four of these radiating on you all day long and your children and your grandkids when they come over and in your entire town? Okay, uh, next slide. So we're doing a lot of stuff, you know, uh, with, the, with the group. There's a group called Citizens for Safe Technology. Uh, you can turn the lights on, uh, Walter. Uh, Citizens for Safe Technology down in Vancouver. We're looking towards uh, doing a referendum. Okay, uh, we're doing all kinds of stuff on on a larger scale level, class action lawsuits, things of this nature, because it's not right. Everyone here knows this is not right. Uh, I hope so. After all that, um, you know, you want to uh, basically send your letters of non-consent because that means you're not entering in with Hydro's contract. You need to get a hold of your uh, city council, your mayor, your newspapers. Uh, your chiefs and councils, uh, people of this nature that can make the decisions, okay? And we're all going to get together and we're going to stop this thing. And if you got 10 minutes a day, if you got 10 minutes a week, would you do that? Would you do that for your child's health, your grandkids' health, the health of your neighbor, your health, your money? Because what's happening right now is BC Hydro and these profiteers are sitting there going, they're not going to do it. They don't care. Look at them. They will do nothing about this because they never do. And this is what's happening right now. The bank robbers are in the bank right now, uh, robbing your health, robbing your lifestyle, robbing your province. And if you don't do nothing, they'll just keep coming back. Next slide. Okay, California, already lawsuits, all this stuff is going on in Texas. Next slide. If you don't have a meter net uh, yet, you've got to send that. Lock up your meters. I'm going to say it straight up. Lock your meter up. You don't want this meter on your house. You must lock up your meter. Corex doesn't care. Corex is a private entity. They're running around. Old ladies are saying, I don't want a meter on their house. They scare them. They intimidate them. Our government has hired a private corporation to go around bullying old women in our country. Can you believe this? This is what our government is doing right now. Those cronies that we saw earlier, this is what we're doing. This is what they're doing. Is that, is, that demon, is that anything you want to be involved with? Okay, so these guys are getting paid commission. So if Hydra says, uh, if you send a letter of non-consent there, sure, that's a good thing for a lawsuit's uh, stability in the end. But if they look at that, they're just going to see a little letter there. There's nothing stopping them from putting it on. Okay, so if you don't lock up your meter, you might get one of these things, even if you have a letter there. It's all going to depend on your Corex agent. And we know a lot of them are not necessarily good guys because they're getting paid. Next slide. So these signs, next slide, which are out in foyer and are on the table now. Okay, there's examples of how to lock up your meter. Okay, 
You have one choice, lock it up or get it. And that's a straight up fact. I wish the government didn't put you uh, in that position. I wish I could do something else for you. But uh, here we are, next slide. Here's, here's probably the easiest and best uh, uh, method. Actually, Walter, can you just hit the light just uh, for one sec so maybe people can see this one? It's probably about the cheapest. Can you see this? Two small padlocks and a large one to go inside the two U's of the padlocks. Okay, that's about the easiest and cheapest way you're going to do it. Thanks, Walter. And there's uh, some other examples, and I think we're about done this slide. Okay, and if you do have a meter, make sure it's not just a digital meter, because they've been going around trying to trick people. For, they're installing these digital meters when they know they're going to take them out, which is another pile of waste. Okay. Uh, let them know you don't give them consent. Stick with it. If you get a meter, say, I do not want this. Keep a track of if you've called Hydra, if you've sent them letters to Hydra because they have trespassed on your property, they have engaged you in a contract that you do not, do not belong in, do not want to be in. Okay, so this is a problem. They have trespassed on your, on your land, on your property. Uh, next slide. And this is just a, one of the groups of people that are responsible basically for getting that vote in uh, the 55% majority vote. So that's the end of that. Okay. Now what I want to tell you um, is, uh, is is something that you guys can uh, do and understand. Okay. One thing: these things don't need to be in until December 2012. Okay. So if Hydra comes on your property, you start asking them questions. Make them know that they you know because they need you to be scared and fearful and not understand this. So you just accept this meter. Say this doesn't need to be on there for 2012. How come in my contract? Uh, it doesn't say anything about a radio frequency device. I won't play those videos. Uh, how, it doesn't say anything about it. What, what happened here? When did I sign to put a radio frequency transmission device on my house? Okay, so you're not violating anything. You're allowing them to do what you agreed to. Come on, read your meter, and leave. That's a responsibility. That's the contract you agreed to. So they're trying to change the contract without your knowledge. So if you don't say no, you said yes. This is what they believe. Implied consent. Can okay. we put a lock on it? Yes, sir. I advise you to put a lock on it. I would advise you because if you don't, again, they're going to see this little piece of paper in the corks guy that's getting a commission, two, three, five dollars, whatever it is per, per meter that he puts on, is going to put this on. Who, by the way, these guys aren't even electricians. Yeah. Hired him out of the newspaper. Yeah. Hey, oh, uh, hey, buddy, can you? Do you got arms and eyes? Yep. Yeah, come on over. Make sure you're in charge of the safety of these children in these households. These households that could be on fire because you may not know what you're doing. We'll pay you to do it. Bypassing the electricians again, uh, uh, making it worse for jobs, for tradespeople, the number one industry in, in the province. Okay? So they need you to be scared and uninformed and not knowing. Think about this. Why do you think this is happening so fast? Why do you think they're going so quick? Why do you think they're keeping all the information so low? Why do you think they're not giving anyone a choice? They want a done deal. They want to get paid by you. Any questions? Go ahead. If there are uh, Corex is hiring people who are not electricians and they install a meter on your house, you're having a, a non-electrician person put an electrical appliance in your house, that again null and voids your insurance. There we go. And, Hy and Hydro, part of that phase as well, as Hydro has created some little law or loophole that said they can actually do this. Okay, so Hydro on their end is, is all good, but your insurance provider is going to say, well, what happened here? Well, Hydro did this. Well, so you got to call Hydro. Call Hydro. Oh, hey, we operated within the laws that we made up just, just before we started this program, so we're all good. And then you look at your insurance and says, we're not covering you. You pay. People all over the place are, place are paying these little fires to replace the, the wiring in their base unit, the fires that happen, the things on the wall, their siding, all this kind of stuff. What happens when somebody dies in a house? What happens when your house burns down? Where's your mortgage? Where's all that money that your life and sweat, blood, sweat, and tears that you put into that thing? Done. Another question, anyone? Go ahead. So you lock your device. Yep. What prevents them from cutting the locks? Nothing. But what also may happen is they may not do it when they know that you mean business more than just a letter on the wall, which is also good. You, you, you send your letter of non-consent registered mail to Hydro. Okay, that is your saying, I refuse to enter into this contract. When you don't say anything, they're saying you've entered in the contract. Now, if someone can pretty much say, um, I wasn't given proper notification to enter into a contract, which doesn't mean you get this little slip in the mail, 
We're putting on a smart meter, by the way, okay, we'll be there in a couple weeks. That's not how it works. It's like, okay, I sign here with you, you sign here with me, we're in a contract now. This is not what's happening. So they can cut that, they can probably do whatever they want, and it looks like they are, but I'm saying spend a few bucks and do it, because it might protect you, it might keep that thing off your house, and, you're, and you can take a picture of it and say, actually, this is my exact way that I'm refusing, I am not getting into this contract. So when we do go class action, or you do want to file and go to court and say they violated you, they trespassed against you, you have a set of data moving forward, the registered letter, your meter was locked, you're not in any violation if you lock that, by the way. Okay? If they need to access it because they believe there might be an electrical problem, sure, come on out, here we go. Okay, electrical, no, we're all good, lock it back up. They can read the meter. Okay, but you're basically saying, you have to come to my door and talk to me before you put this meter on. Then you have an interface with this guy and you say, if you're gonna put this meter on, we're going to court. He probably won't put that meter on. Say, I need your name, I need your, your, your ID number, I'm gonna take a picture of your license plate, you're fully within your right to do that on your property. They can't say otherwise, they've been scaring old ladies down in the city in Vancouver saying, you can't take my picture, give me your camera, okay? So, if you do this, you might actually, quote unquote, intimidate them not in, into not putting the meter on, okay? I will put a lawsuit against you, he's probably gonna walk, he'll go to the neighbors. Yeah. Okay. Something, something really important with this too, and again, I did, I did this as an electrical professional when, when I went and asked questions specifically about this. Well, imagine this. I don't, I don't care why Health Canada didn't do their job and didn't pass this on, but imagine this. Because of the mechanism found and reported, the frequencies are illegal. So imagine this with these meters. They're illegal. They're not complying with Safety Code 6. And where the energy minister got interested with us is he said the Clean Energy Act allows us an exemption to go on your property. And they said it does not. It says on there that the meter and the smart grid have to meet regulation. And because they don't, they would have no reason to come on your property to maintain or look at illegal gear. And here's what I've said to RCMP. They've said, listen, this is a civil dispute. And I've said it has been reported that the frequencies are causing problems within code, it's illegal, these guys are criminally negligent for not doing this, they're not putting that meter on the property. And I would just go with that and refer it like that because I've heard lots of guys being turned away because uh, they don't like the bullying back and return, they're just pushing this issue, and they just don't belong there. They, they just don't belong. And we, when, we, when you say the RCMP, okay. so could you say this, they're trespassing? And I don't Here, want here's where, here's, and I got this from a mayor, which is really cool with this. The RCMP, as soon as they called them, they said, hey, this is a civil dispute. You know, you guys want to argue with these guys about that civil dispute? But as soon as you put up a sign that says no trespassing, now you're talking about the RCMP getting involved with this. And something about even my information with there, I've, well, listen, I'm welcoming information from RCMP. This is in courts in the U.S. regarding this same issue. They can't bully you on the issue. If they need to contact us, we would just say, hey, this is reported through the authority. They should have passed it along. They did not. They shouldn't be on your property because something I maintain with RCMP officers. See these guys wearing this wireless technology on their chest now? Imagine this, they're coming to me and saying, hey, I got cancer in my arm.